The second scripture reading today is from Matthew 4, verses 12 through, and through 23. Now when Jesus heard that John was arrest, has been arrested, he withdrew to Galilee. He, ne- he left Nazareth and made his home to Capernaum by the lake in the territory of Zebulun and, ne- and ne- Nephtali. And so that what had been spoken through the prophet Isaiah may be fulfilled. Land of Zebulun, land, land of, um, yeah, <laughs> Nephtali. On the road by the seas across the Jordan of the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles, the people who sat in darkness had, has, have been seen a great light. For those who sat in the region of the shadow of death, light has been dawned. From the time Jesus has been proclaimed, repent for, of, the, of the kingdom of heaven has come near. As he walked by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who is called Peter, and his brother, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the lake, into the lake, for they were fishermen. And he and he said to them immediate, he said to them, "Follow me, and I will make your wish for people." Immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went to from them, the two brothers, um, the two brothers, James, son of um, Zebedee, and his brother John, in the boat with his with their father Zebedee, mending their nets, and he called them. Immediately, they left their boats and they fo- and their father and followed them. Jesus went through the Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of, of the kingdom and curing every every disease and sickness among the people. Thanks, Suche. As my seminary professor always said, there are crazy names in scripture that we still don't know how are pronounced, so as long as we pronounce with confidence, nobody will ever know the difference. That is not, however, what we want to do in terms of discipleship. We do need to know um, what we're talking about and not just make something up confidently and then have people following the wrong way. And so we come to today and to the discernment that we're spending some time with in terms of what it means to be called as Christians and what it means for the second person of the Trinity to have taken on human flesh Um, and for Jesus to have lived as one man in one particular place and time um, and what that means for our salvation. Now, Megan, when we were doing the call to worship, Megan, do you remember having trouble? It was, it was rough. And, and I was laughing because there are plenty of times when um, I have heard God's call coming when I have not been happy to hear that. And last week we talked about how hard it can be sometimes and the burnout that can happen and trying to follow and trying to do something and not seeing it work out or happen and how hard it is to then come back and regroup for God to still work through us and to find hope again and keep going. And so we're in this journey together, and we're going to be looking at it, um, at what call means and what incarnation means here um, as we go forward um, into the time and season of Lent together. Um, Last week was looking at what we do when call is hard. This week is going to be a little bit more practical as we decide, will we even follow God's call? Um, because we have that choice and that option, clearly um, me standing up here with this um, yoke of a stool upon me, like I have a preference for what we decide, but we all decide and we all work this together many moments of our lives. But before we even get to whether or not we follow, I want to look at who the we are as we look to the disciples that Jesus called Um, There were fishermen, right, from this story, but then there were also zealots, you know, revolutionaries of the time, and there there was also a tax collector um, who was then working with the power instead of working against it, and all of these people and all of their spectrum of understanding God and what they hoped for in the midst of their context at their time followed together. And then we have Paul talking to the church in Corinth as well, which also had some pretty crazy diversity happening in terms of socioeconomics, in terms of rich and poor, and slave and free, and also in terms of ethnicity, in terms of Jewish and Gentile. 
And so we had a broad spectrum there. And we know from the passage in Corinth that it doesn't always go well. There were still some special interest groups there that were vying and, and trying to figure out how to come together. But that diversity was present. That spectrum was there. And there were a lot of people who were really curious about that. We've never seen that grouping of people together before. So what is this all about? How could those people of that different interest and perspective and understanding of life come together? A fun fact for us in terms of as we look forward to the beginnings um, of the early church, most of the apostles' speeches in the book of Acts come from questions that were asked of them. It wasn't them telling everybody and taking their soapbox and saying, okay, this is who Jesus is and this is what you need to know. They responded to the curiosity that people had because of what they saw. So when John comes forward and asks what our bait is, we would hope that it is a life lived in such a way that people haven't seen that before. And they want to know what that's about. Now, we're not going to go and eat them for dinner, so the metaphor breaks down there. Um, but we hope that that is the entrance point, that it is one of question and curiosity, that is one that follows that incarnational model of being in relationship in such a way that people want to know more and see more because there's something good happening here that they want to find out about. And so as we figure out who we are at Epworth and what our call is, and if we'll follow it, we also celebrate who we are and who our community is, and we pay attention to that as well. And so there's always in call a little component of evangelism and sharing what we found. And for Paul, that nugget comes in explaining that for many, the foolishness of the cross is something they can't understand or overcome, but for others, it is that very foolishness is the very power. And we have to think back to that context, to being occupied by Romans and seeing a cross not that would inspire hope and love and an and anchor of depth and who God is, but one that would inspire terror and fear of a power that is asserting itself and reminding everyone who is in power and who is not. And so there's pain in the cross, and then there's foolishness for those in power who are asserting their power um, by holding others in fear and taking out anyone who would challenge their power that you're really going to follow a God who died. Like, what kind of power is there in that to celebrate a king who is not Caesar that we nailed to a tree, to a cross? That's ridiculous. That's foolish. What are you thinking? And then the response is we're thinking that there is finally someone who is beyond us, who is beyond this instance of power and lack of power, who cared enough to come and to live in solidarity with us every ounce of what we experience here whether that be the tax collector with some power, whether that be the story of Nicodemus who also has some power, but it's still not quite right and there's still a seeking and a searching, or whether that be the revolutionary who sees all of the pain and the terror and is ready to do everything that he can to fight against that and to depose that. Everyone who is seeking for hope and for something different and finding a God who will stand in solidarity through the worst and the scariest moments of our life. That is the power of God. That is the kingdom of God, of heaven come near. That is a taste of what we pray for when we say, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
And so that's the story that we have to share. Where we find our hope. What has not been enough as we engage the day-to-day of our life? Because there are always going to be nets that need repair. There's always going to be something that traps us and holds us. And it will be our decision whether we stay there and whether we still do good in, in that cycle and in that place or whether we let everything how we live our life and how we live our life with others change. And that choice is always ours of how much space we give God to work with. Because God can do good, and I'm sure God has done good through the different fishermen and through the different tax collectors and through the different revolutionaries that came long before these disciples and many different contexts all the way through back of scripture where we have the stories of how God was at work through kings and through prophets um, and through many others, through widows and through all of those who would hear him and give him space to work. But where the life transformation moments happen is when we give God even more space. When we step away from the daily routine that we have given ourselves to and give even that to God. And that's when all of a sudden the miraculous can start to happen because of how much the Holy Spirit has to work in and through and with. And so as we're discerning, that's what I want to talk about here at Epworth. Because it's been a wonderful for six months and getting to know you, and I'm still working on getting to more and more of your homes and visiting with you in person there and, and us finding out more about who each other are. But we're also going to be starting um, a, an offering of getting together in small groups um, with John McGuckin, who will be our lay leader um, for this year, so that we can share our stories of call and what we understand and want um, for Epworth um, and for Epworth's call. So both individually and collectively. Because I want to know who we are and what we have already discerned that God wants from us in 2017 in Cockeysville, um, a very near and close. And we'll look at far out too, but I want to know right now where Epworth is needed and what God can only accomplish through Epworth, through how we have grown in our understanding of God, the experiences that we have had that have made us more empathetic and being able to see that in other places in our community, more sensitive to it to know where we are needed. And in the graphic, there's, there's a lot of different ways that could go. There are a lot of different calls on our lives. But what I want for us to do is choose one. Because in my understanding and reading from Paul today, if we have one mind in terms of one purpose, then that will be strong enough to unite all of the other differences that we have and that we bring. And that will give us a way of knowing what to say no to and knowing what to say yes to. And the reason that I want something strong enough to call us forward together is because we can do a lot of good going in lots of different directions, but that good will only go so far because of how many different ways we're going all at once. And what I would like is to be able to go longer in one direction, to bring about transformation that isn't just good for the moment, but has some roots that will last for longer. And that will be a moment that not only changes our lives, but changes our community as well. And will be something that calls us forward because I don't know about you all, but diversity is a wonderful thing and it's a hard thing. And if we're going to be able to do this with all the integrity that we bring, 
for me to be able to do it, it means I need to be very crystal clear on what our purpose is, to call me forward into that and to know how to relate to one another and to know what to give testimony to and what to share and to know what God can accomplish through us because as much need as there is and as much as I would love to meet all of those needs, we are limited people in a limited time and it's not gonna happen. And it's okay that it not, doesn't happen because there is a God who doesn't have limits in time or place or in power and capability. And there is a God who can save everything and can accomplish everything. But we're not God. And that is not what we're able to do. But there is something that we are able to do. And that's what I want to find together in these gatherings as we come together and try to discern what that call is and what that road is that God has prepared at worth for to go long on, to be able to bring about substantial transformation and change for us and for our community. And so as we reflect on what it means to be called and whether or not we will follow God's call, I would ask that we enter into this time as a period of discernment together, as we figure out and pray and find from God what is that one essential thing that God wants to do through Epworth that only Epworth is equipped to do in our community. And then once we settle and find that call and know that call, what is it that we will give up and leave behind to follow that call because of how important and because of what we see that God can accomplish if we do that? There are routines that will need to change. There are things that will need to be left. But for the work and for the transformation that can happen, I hope that we all will be able to take that risk as the disciples so long ago did and follow in their tradition and be able to fish for people and find people that otherwise would be lost and would not have the hope that we are able to share. So this week for our commitment, I would ask um, that we look into our own private practices of spiritual discipline, of how we give God space and time to call us. Because there's a lot pulling on us all the time. And it's a miracle that these brothers heard Christ's call, let alone followed it. So what are the spaces that we can build into our lives to hear God's call so that we know what it will be that God wants from us so that then we can be able to follow that. Um, and please do um, have our eyes and hearts and ears open as John and I um, come in the coming weeks um, with times and invitations to come together to do some of this discerning together to set that space aside and start to really pray on what it is that God needs from us here at Upworth and how we will ready and equip ourselves to be able to respond. Amen.